Um, our next comedian is um, of the evening boasts as having sometimes worn pants. Oh, that's what I said. I uh, I hope he made the right decision tonight, and so is the war pants. In addition to his pant wearing skills, he's an entrepreneur, a writer, a dreamer, and a thinker. He says. I'm just wondering if he thinks about wearing pants or not. You know. <laughs> so, hey, please welcome to the stage uh, for his very first time here, uh, Michael Kreidler. Give it up for Michael. Yeah. Yeah. I would have brought the grandkids, you know, so I get that a lot. I get, oh my God, it's Santa Claus. And I also get, believe it or not, is he an exotic dancer? <laughs> so, and the answer is yes, I am. Now, uh, you look at this and you go, huh, something's not right. And that's why I specialize in something called reverse stripping. So I go to a bachelorette party or something like that naked, and they pay me to put my clothes back on. As you can imagine, it's a very lucrative kind of thing. And so I'm like, hey, ladies, you want to see a little less of this? You better make it rain. So I got that going for me. But that's not at all what I wanted to tell you and talk about tonight. Instead, uh, I just really need to know and let you know that uh, I just realized just how freaking clueless I am all the time, 24 seven. I have no fucking idea what's going on, <laughs> no idea. And so uh, to, a good example of that, I'm down in Nashville and I'm at this gay bar. And to understand that statement, it's really important for you to know something pretty personal. I haven't told a lot of people this, but I think this is a safe space. I'm a father of four. And I remember when my kids were real young, I thought, you know, the odds are that one of them is going to be gay. And you have to also understand, at this point in my life, I was a very, very conservative Catholic. More Catholic than the Pope kind of Catholic, you know, one of those things. And so I was uh, thinking that, and I realized that just having the thought that one of my kids could be gay, it made me the most liberal person I knew. So, but I was thinking of that. And skip forward several years, and I was wrong. Not one of my kids is gay. In fact, three of them are gay. <laughs> and as a conservative Catholic dad, I took that information in and was like, well, that's above average. <laughs> <laughs> and so here I am in Nashville at this gay bar with my oldest, Carson. Now Carson is not only gay, but it's also non-binary. <laughs> Anybody know what non-binary means? No, no, anybody? no clue. No, no clue? Okay, we got someone in the back, so after the show, please explain it to me. But actually, it means that Carson does not accept the label of either male or female. That they see sexuality and gender as being on a continuum. And so I thought about that, and I'm like, well, you know, okay. Okay, I can, I can get behind that, that's fine. The only problem I have with it is really personal pronouns. Right? right? Yeah. Yeah, so it would not be appropriate for me to say about Carson, he or she, that would be inappropriate and insensitive and, and in some jurisdictions, hate speech. So I, I, it would be more appropriate to say they and them. So, where is Carson? They're at the movies. Pretty straightforward? Not at all. 
Not at all. And anybody who tells you well, it's part of the English language and it really shouldn't be so simple, so difficult, it's really simple, they're lying to you. They are lying to you because I would say, where is Carson? They're at the movies. Oh, they are, are they? Who did they go with? Oh, no, they didn't go with anyone. They went alone. Oh, I thought that she and Alicia were together. Yes, they were. But ultimately, Carson, they went alone. Now, that's difficult enough, but if Carson gets together with one of their non-binary friends, you end up with sentences like, they went with them there. <laughs> Confused all the time. So here I am at the gray, at the crying wolf down in Nashville, and uh, I'm going to be there for a little while because my oldest Carson has a date, and it seemed appropriate for some reason that I would be at the crying wolf for several hours by myself. You know shouldn't be left unattended and unsupervised. I mean, everybody should know that by now. So there I am, and Carson goes off for their date, and I have to decide if I'm gonna suck down a banana hammock or go for a missionary position. Those are two of the specialty drinks at the Bible. And if you wanna know, I have pictures of it. I was like, wow, that's something. So, and I'm thinking about my kids again. So my oldest, is non-binary and then my second oldest is a, a gay woman beautiful woman wonderful woman now with her i got thinking i said you know they say there's nothing you can do as a parent that created them being gay it just it's who they are it's it's all just kind of natural and i i, I think i mostly agree with that but with Anne, i think we helped her along just a little bit. So uh, my wife says, hey, you know, uh, Ann asked me some information about the birds and the bees. And uh, I said, well, how'd it go? Really well. <laughs> really well. Well, that wasn't quite right because we're in the van and I'm asking my oldest, well, what do you think you want to do with your life? And she goes, uh, I think I want to I get married and have babies. Well, by the way, remember who Carson is? Yeah. It's, not didn't happen so so she says uh yeah i think i want to have babies and ann who my wife had had a talk about sex with from the back of the van suddenly shouts out but michaela babies come out of vaginas babies come out of vaginas and i'm going wow that just didn't go as well as i think you hoped it would so i think we might have helped her along kind of on that way now I uh then my next child is a is a gay man and frankly he's 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 pretty much a prick and uh I say that because when my kids came out to me I thought I was being really supportive very loving and I get this text from my gay son that said dad I do not approve of your lifestyle as long as you're gonna live that lifestyle, we can't talk until you get your act together. And I'm reading this and I'm going, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> I, I don't know. And as far as I could tell, what he didn't approve of is two things. One was how I spent my money and two, the fact that, well, dad likes the ganja a little bit. So, but then I started thinking, I said, really, those two reasons are just one reason, really. And so he's not talking to me. Then it comes down to my youngest. My youngest is my straight child. And I am convinced that she's straight as an act of rebellion against her brother and sisters. And I mean, it's frankly, it's also difficult for me, I must say, because to raise three gay kids and then to have to pivot to a straight child can be difficult. It's hard to get my head around, hard to kind of get there. But I thought I was doing pretty good, but one day she comes in to the kitchen, says, Dad, we need to talk. And I'm like, yeah, what, what's up, hon? She says, I need to talk to you about something. It's kind of difficult. 
I said, yeah, honey, you can tell me anything. And she says, Dad, I'm straight. And I like boys. <laughs> now, after having three gay children, I let out a little gasp. <laughs> you know, because three out of four, I mean, I was getting there. But she says, uh, yeah. And I said, I, I thought I composed myself quickly. And I said, uh, honey, I love you for who you are and not for who you love. And she's like, Dad, oh, it's wonderful. And she leaves. And I couldn't help it. The first thing that came to my mind when she left the room is, it, it's got to just be a phase. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd think that having gay, three gay kids, that there'd be a gay solidarity in the household. And that's just not true. That my oldest, when they came out, very, very militant in the positive sense, went to meetings, went to marches, joined organizations. Now, the other two didn't really think that much of that. And one day I walk into the house and I hear my Anne, my second oldest, yelling at my oldest, would you just stop being so gay? Just stop it. And I'm going, I don't know what to do with that information. So, yeah, I'm confused. But here I am in Nashville. And I'm sitting there saying, well, I'm going to be unsupervised in this gay bar for a couple hours. And that's okay. I ordered a drink. I ordered a hot chicken sandwich. And then it occurred to me. I'm like, wait a minute. What if someone hits on me? <laughs> I mean, because look at this. Someone could hit on me. And I wasn't sure of how I would react, what I think, what I would do. Well, fast forward two hours. It's time for me to close out my check. And as I stand up to leave, I realize no one's hit on me. And I was disappointed and a little angry. Because I'm like, what's wrong? I'd make a really good day if someone would just give me a chance. And then I realized <laughs> clueless, confused all the time. And speaking of, that's, that's all the time I have. So have a good night. Yeah. Yeah.